Hello and welcome to Avon Ads. Imagine what you will do with AI video series. We're delighted to have today with us Niall Igo from Flowgas. Niall, you're very welcome. Thanks, Paul. You might tell us a little bit about you and your history in technology. Yeah, so I am the IT director in Flowgas Ireland. So we're part of the larger DCC group. Been in this role for the last four years. Prior to that, about 12 years with CRH. And a few years prior to that, I was implementing small ERPs, so small, small manufacturing companies around Ireland. So you've seen a significant change in technology in the last... Yeah, absolutely. Right through from trying to get global address lists together across different companies and de decentralized businesses, right through to now where data is really driving business value right across our business. So you might tell us a little bit about Flowgas, the, the company. Yeah. So Flowgas, are part of DCC Group. Uh, DCC is listed on the London Stock Exchange. So Flowgas is an all-island energy business. Uh, we have LPG and energy. So LPG is where we take physical product into the country and distribute it either in our trucks or in our cylinders. And then we have our energy utility business where we buy the power and the gas from the grid and sell it out to our customers. Approximately 250,000 customers across the island of Ireland. And so a lot of that would be, I mean, your different sectors, you've got consumer sector, residential, yes. and you would have the energy, as you said yourself. I'm guessing with all of that comes a significant need to be right at the front line from a technology perspective. Yeah, we get data in every day. We have market reads coming in from our different suppliers every single day that we have to process, send bills out to our customers, get our bills right. And then it's a constant, we, we constantly be selling to customers through our various channels, be it door-to-door -door sales or through our web or through our brokers, our, our price comparison website. So lots and lots of different sources of the data that we're all trying to bring in and consolidate into our back end. So when it comes to the journey, I mean, I'm sure you've witnessed the, the, the hype cycle, shall we say, of the last while. Um, the massive transformation of the way the market talks about AI and leveraging AI. How do you start on a journey like that? How do you know, where does it all begin for you? Uh, well, we started on our journey about four years ago where we looked at our systems and we just knew that they weren't fit for purpose for where technology was going, be that the data insights we wanted to get. Even prior to this AI hype kicking off, we knew data was going to be fundamental to drive our business forward. So we started on a consolidation of our system. So we've started implementing Dynamics 365. Uh, we're heavily invested in the Microsoft technology stack. And we've pushed on. So we're in the middle of that implementation at the moment, but we're fully live now with all our customers in Northern Ireland. So an investment in ERP is a significant investment, but clearly comes with its own business value. So that must have brought you on a journey then as you've gone into the likes of AI and data modernization you're aware of what the business value needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. So it was as much as we needed to get more insight into our customers, what they wanted, where they were, and really get an understanding of all of our customer base. Um, and now it's driving forward. It's about getting that platform in place, consolidating the four businesses together. But it's really about having a common data architecture that we can start really leveraging for our AI initiatives that we really want to kick on with. So when you looked at the, the, the AI use cases and you went through I'm sure you saw an, an awful lot of opportunity within those AI use cases, but did it all come back to a fundamental kind of starting point or how did you approach it? We didn't start with AI in mind. Um, what we started with is we wanted to, we knew we needed to get our data in, in proper uh, shape that we could use the yeah. technology. So we started with that through BI and all of these. So it was a, a long journey that we've been on. But in the last 24 months, where all of a sudden where AI has kicked off and we've seen, no, we really need this to be at the front end. And it's not even be at the front end to compete in these markets. Yeah. We need to have our, our AI capability, but the AI all starts with the data, having the data in good, clean data in, in good architecture. It's fascinating, actually, you hit on a really interesting point there. I mean, in essence, you've been probably on this journey for a while because Power BI or any of the technologies that allow you to report on your data requires you to have that data in a good place. So you've obviously started that journey and would I be right in saying it's it's now accelerated the uh, consolidation of, this, of the data sources, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And it's like at the beginning of this project, it was about cleaning data and the business just didn't see any value in cleaning data. It was a chore that they had to do, just a necessary evil. But now they're coming to us saying, right, how do we get this data clean? What do we need to do? Because they know, they're starting to see the benefit that clean data will bring them in AI and in, in the different models that they want to build. And there's a point where I probably want to step back to slightly, which I, I've always found very interesting. Flowgas is part of the wider federated DCC group. Yes. 
that must come with significant benefits from the learnings and the gains. And even if from a perspective of when Flowgas do something innovative, the ability for the group to actually feed that back down. Yeah. Well, how has that experience been? And you know, not just being a company on its own, it's been part of a group. Yeah, well, I guess there's two elements from it. Number one, the relationship with Microsoft is very strong because we're not just the Flowgas with uh, our footprint going to talk to yeah. Microsoft. We're a much larger group that we're able to talk to them and get get help with them in, in these journeys and where we should be going to in these journeys. But also then when it comes to the likes of engagement with yourself, we're able to then say, right, we'll take the first step on behalf of the group. We'll maybe put the foundation stone in place, but then there's a first stepping stone that other parts of the group can take to say, they mightn't be quite as sure how to get on board with this journey and we can help them in that front. So all the knowledge we gain through the uh, engagement with Avanade and, and the setting up our fabric environment, mm. other parts of the group can leverage. We're effect at the end of the day, like the businesses are very, very similar, not identical, but quite similar. The challenges we face as IT are very similar. So we're able to then help them get, get that first yeah. step on the journey. And then maybe they will go a bit further than us and we can learn from where they've met. And it is, it's, it's, it's is—it's—it's—it's been fascinating working with, with the group and with yourselves is that that really works because uh, our one of our recent engagements was about modernizing the data platform with Microsoft Fabric. And that an, opens the door to so many opportunities within Flowgas, but they're replicatable. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's, we're not unique and we're all heavily invested in the Microsoft. We, we've been one of Microsoft's biggest customers in, in Ireland for, for many, many years. Yeah. A lot of ERP projects going on across the group, but it doesn't, what I've learned from this process that we've gone through, it doesn't really matter what your ERP is. This common data layer that we're building with Fabric it's going to be benefit, beneficial to the whole group. Yeah. Consolidating data. You're right, because what's been the transformation we've seen ChatGPT and Azure Open AI in the last 12 months, but like Fabric was launched in November last year. Yeah. Like approximately nine months ago, right? So a significant uh, acceleration of it. And it was fundamentally when we think about it because it's simplicity in creating that one lake where your data could all either replicate or sit into. Yeah. It opens the door to yep. maximizing that power. But with great power comes great responsibility. The one thing that, you know, you've always spoken about when we work together was that security governance and responsible AI. I mean, it all starts there. Data, data modernization is such an important thing. But having your data secure is probably one of the most important things to you. Yeah, absolutely. Like we're, we're very clear. We're like, why are we collecting this data? What are we using it for? And even internally in the organization, who has access to it? Because we are getting entrusted and it's back to that trust thing with our customers. We have to, they trust us to give us this data and we have to make sure that they trust us, uh, that that trust we're, we're acting on, we're following through on. From speaking with you, I've known that, that that is one of the kind of the heartbeat of the company is to really understand the, the, the consumer. Yeah. Um, as we go back to partnerships, we might slightly touch back on again, that Microsoft partnership. Yes, I mean, a lot of your organization is fundamentally got some significant Microsoft investments across Azure and uh, the likes of Defender from a security perspective, uh, Fabric from a data platform perspective. Um, you said that that's at the kind of group level, but really benefits you as an organization. Oh, it absolutely does. And it's helped bring us along. Like we followed their roadmap. We've listened to Microsoft, listened to where they're going. We've tried to be early adopters of that technology because we see the benefit and we are seeing the benefit every day of what they're bringing us, like the Dynamics platform live in two businesses, but it's a platform that we can now grow into, grow across the group in. We're starting another CRM project for, for our LPG side of our business, but then ultimately with True Dataverse and True Fabric, we're going to be able to pull all of this data together and even future acquisitions, we'll, we'll have them bolted on quicker. Even though we may not change their ERP, we'll be delivering business value quicker of all the and through all these acquisitions as we grow and you know what that's that's jumped out with me as, as I've, I've gone through as i said i mean the the fabric the fabric technology platform side of things is, is literally not even a year old from yeah. from ga perspective um chat the models of 4.0 it's in mid-year that the, there's now the advent of the the small language model it's been breakneck yeah. it's been the speed at which this has changed what i've been super interested in is the pace at which you've moved yep. in that time it's yep. been quite exceptional because you've you've taken the whole technology that's available to you from microsoft yeah 
and you really have modernized your data. You're in the data cleansing piece. You've leveraged the business application side in the house. Apps and infrastructure, you obviously, you know, with all this data, you need to be able to interact with data. Uh, so what has it been that's kept you at that pace? Is it just an awareness for the change that was coming? An awareness, um, a business demand, a business support, like th th people are looking for this. It's not that we're not going out having to sell these things to the business anymore. It's that they're coming to us looking and demanding these things. And when you say to them, okay, but you're going to have to clean up all your data, they're okay, we'll do it. Um, because the business value. Because is they see the business uh, value. And, and, and I suppose when you turn around and say that if we have a happy customer who we truly understand they can offer more, we'll have more customers, that obviously then exactly. makes its own case. And then you can talk about all the data you can self-serve out to your customers. So this, not to stop them calling in, but to let them do service themselves at a time that they want to service, not be stuck to our nine to six o'clock call center. And uh, does that call. seem like the, the future of where things go? Is that the customer is more and more and more informed? Absolutely. Yeah, I think anyone... Like if I look at my generation, anyone who puts solar panels on their roof, they're, they're going to every night be checking, well, what did I generate? What did I save? Where, have, where is it at? What have I consumed from the grid? How do I leverage my investment? So I think people are more and more informed. They want it. They want the app on their phone. It's no, no longer acceptable that they wait for their bill every two months. They want to know in real time, what are they using? Because the power that people are using, like the EVs, all of this other capability are in the smart homes. They, they want to know in real time what they're using. And it, it's been the interesting piece as well, as you talked about, I mean, the launch of real-time intelligence within the Fabric platform has been groundbreaking in itself, but, but the idea that the data activator side of things, where you can trigger activities from yeah. that, that level of ac um, items that happen at a particular moment, those events, that yeah. you can actually trigger those actions to, from those events, that must lead you towards so many different use cases. That It does, and it's it's more, it's not that we're going to, so if we do an outbound campaign to try and retain customers, we're making sure that we're adding value into it because there will be customers that are just going to leave us anyway, and we, we know they're going to leave. They've joined us 12 months, and they're just customers that switch every, every 12 months. But there's other customers that maybe aren't in that profile, and if we can react to those customers quickly, uh, we have a very good chance of winning them back. It must be exciting to be part of a company that's probably progressing at that speed along with the group that's also yeah. facilitating it. Absolutely, yeah, it's, it is. It's it's really interesting time to be in the energy market. Um, it, it's moving at a hell of a pace and that's also driving the, the people in the business are going, we need to keep a pace here and the demands, the demand that we're getting from them is great and the investment that we're making into these things they're not cheap, but they deliver. It's not about being cheap. It's about delivering value. And it's with the return. Exactly. Yeah. And that's all the way we look at all our business cases. What return are we going to get on them? And everything we've done to date has really, it's a clear return that we're able to demonstrate. Um, we'll wrap up with a, a very kind of a poignant question. Um, where do you see it all going? Where do you see not just the energy business, but technology? Uh, going in the next year, two years, three years, or can you even imagine? I'm not sure I can even imagine at this stage because if if we had had this conversation three years ago, I certainly wouldn't have predicted what's materialized. I do think I'll, I'll refer back. I think the consolidate fabric being a consolidation platform for the likes of a DCC group. I think that's really where it's going to be, where we can get insight into our large commercial customers across countries and really go and talk to them in a in an informed manner. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, uh, from a data side, I think that's where it's going to go. It's fascinating uh, in, in, in a sense because the DCC group enables the nimbleness of their companies, doesn't it? And, it and when I look to, to Avanad, it's similar. Uh, uh, the power of tree between Accenture and Microsoft Avanad, but the nimbleness that we're able to operate in the Microsoft ecosystem, it's very similar in yeah. the sense of, because that gets the best results. You're it part does. of a, an engine, but you're, but it's also, you're not trying to do something huge at group that if it fails, it's going to be a disaster because you've invested millions yeah. in it. You're able to still be agile at an operating company level, find what works, find what doesn't work, find good partners like Alvinad, and then bring that to the rest of the group and say, we've done this. If you want to learn from it, we're happy. Come over, see us, go and talk to uh, our partners, see what they're recommending for your environment. Mm. 
It sounds like a great place to be. It sounds like a very exciting place to be. Uh, Niall, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, great. Thanks, Paul.